Meet Mike Russell, astrobiologist at the Jet Propulsion Laboratory. Mike is one of the, he loves hydrothermal vents, and he's one of the founders of the idea that life could have gotten started at alkaline hydrothermal vents. Here's a picture of some of the thermodynamics involved in that, and the inevitable journey to being. He thinks that life will inevitably get started in such places. And I sat down with him at a conference in Arizona, and we asked, talked about, are we alone? Are we alone in the universe, Michael? Uh, no, but I, I wouldn't say we. I mean, the, the bacteria and the, the prokaryotes, the ordinary small cells, they'll be many places. Uh, so, intelligent life will be pretty rare, I think, and probably short-lived, I'm afraid to say. So let's talk about the origin of life. Now, a lot of astronomers, when I ask them the question, are we alone, they'll say, no, we're not alone. And, and I say, why? He says, because the universe is so big. Do you agree with that? Not really. I think that kind of harks back to the Drake equation, and I don't, I don't like that kind of argument. I think that uh, li life exists uh, to basically use up or dissipate free energy or uh, gradients in, in a, a world like ours. And uh, so I don't think that it happens everywhere. And, and certainly intelligent life, for example, one of the amazing things about uh, our planet is the, the depth of the ocean. It's just, what, four or five kilometers deep at, uh, on, on average, and, and we've got 30% of the world is covered with continents. I think that might be rather unusual. Either planets might be dry or very wet, and of course you can't make telescopes if you've got a five, uh, 10 kilometer or 50 kilometer uh, ocean if, because there'd be no continents. So to get, have complex life, I think you need some dry land. Now you are known for Photons. one of the major uh, scenarios for the origin of life on this planet. Can you tell us what that is? Well, it would start with the fact that the planet like ours, uh, a wet, rocky planet, is like a battery. And the battery's output is about one volt. And therefore, uh, it, and the way to spend it is through something like a fuel cell. And life is a fuel cell. And that's the way that free energy is spent, actually, and used up. So you do not think that there is a special recipe that makes the origin of life improbable. You kind of would, would agree with Christian Dedu's statement that life is a cosmic imperative. Yes, and it's a continu along with him, I'd say it's a continuum from geochemistry to biochemistry. Why couldn't it be the case that instead of life on all these other planets, you would have chemical gardens? Well, because the chemical garden gives you the membrane between the inside and outside, and that membrane is kind of, in a sense, a structure of the world in which the is dis in disequilibrium. So the membrane keeps the material on this side, which is reduced, shall we say, hydrogen and the fuels like hydrogen and methane, and, uh, and high uh, hydroxyl, that is very alkaline, from an acidic side here with carbon dioxide in it, uh, and nitric acid or nitrate in it, uh, and protons in it. And, and that there's a kind of struggle, there's a frustration for these things. They want to mix, but they can't because they're frustrated. Right. And I would keep on saying, you know, the, the whole point about creativity, if you look at creativity in the universe, it's always down to some kind of frustration. And they, we know that in our own lives. It's only the frustrated poets that are really good ones. Now you're doing experiments that are kind of simulating what happens at a hydrothermal vent. Yes. Are you, do you think you're getting closer to evolving life in the, in the test tube or in the lab? En Enrique Fermi, said beautifully that if you do an experiment and it comes out the way you expect, then you've made an, a, a measurement. Uh, if it doesn't, you've made a discovery. Well, some of the experiments we did did not come out the way we expected, and we think that we've made quite a discovery that way. One of the expectations of the alkaline vent theory, which I subscribe to, one of the aspects of this I subscribed to early on. Uh, you invented it, didn't I you? invented it. Well, I, you know, invented it, yes. Well, okay. Sure. Uh, but nevertheless, I went along with the idea that serpentinization would only, not only give us hydrogen and methane, but also perhaps some organic molecules and, sulfide, uh, and methane sulfide, for example. And we found that we just couldn't do that in the lab. All we could make was, a, was a, something called formate, uh, formic acid, basically what ants uh, sting you with. Uh, so that wasn't much of a discovery. So we'd reduced carbon dioxide to carbon monoxide. But it put us into the state of saying, well, maybe life didn't, maybe life needed a little bit of a start. Maybe hydrogenating carbon dioxide is true, but right down the bottom, it was rather like having the huskies and the sledge in the morning outside the frozen, uh, your frozen tent. And what do you do? You don't get, expect the huskies to pull that sledge out of the snow. You've got to shake it free, then they can take off. How do we take, how can we shake life free, so to speak, 
from geochemistry and, and we came to the conclusion that actually you covered it the other way and you oxidize methane because there's plenty of methane in these vents as well and they're both good fuels and if you think about how rocketry first was often used is hydrogen plus methane plus this oxidant with nitric acid and boom off it goes. Do you have any advice for students who are thinking about becoming astrobiologists? Uh, read books, walk in the country, take the earphones out, uh, know where you are all the time, crossing the road, on the train, feel the physics, keep feeling the physics, be totally, just be a caveman, totally aware of the dangers of the environment and it's those dangers of the environment that make us sensitive to the way the world works. So basically it's really uh, becoming you know, almost kind of soulful about one's life.